Thank you very much. Many of you are probably wondering, what is a producer? So I thought I'd just start out by, by giving you a little insight into how I look at the producer's role on a film. I look at every movie as a startup company. And with the startup company, our business plan is the script. And the producer is the CEO of that company. Other companies might hire engineers. We hire production designers. Other companies might hire sales executives. We hire actors. Well, maybe there's a similarity in those two positions. But anyway, I was lucky enough to grow up around the industry. My parents were producers. And I got to watch them go through the ma magical balancing act of balancing story and business as they went to produce their independent movies. But their independent movies, they taught me something. They said in their films that movies should have a social relevance. And those goals are really the same goals that we have today when we're producing our movies. I think it's even more important that we have those roles. And that's why if you look at Avatar and you look at the images at the beginning of the movie and at the end of the movie, it's bookended by the same image, Jake opening his eyes. And Jim and I viewed that as a symbolic challenge to audiences around the world to open their eyes and to understand that our actions have an effect and a repercussion on both people around us and the world around us. We wanted to challenge the audiences to open their eyes and to realize that, to realize that their actions affect the world around us. But for us, as filmmakers, it's not our job to preach. We have to entertain. So it's, it's a way that we find entertainment and using technology to propel people to examine how they live their lives. And the same can be said for any business. Because I think when you converge those things and you engage people, you challenge them to examine how they live their lives. Jim actually first wrote Avatar while we were filming or prepping Titanic. But at the time, the technology did not exist to tell the story the way we needed to tell the story. So we put it on the back burner, and we waited. And as we were nearing 2005, we saw even more compelling reasons as we looked around the world to try and find a way to make this movie, because we felt the message of the movie had to be told. And we got 20th Century Fox to support us for a year while we researched if we could be the impetus to push technology where it had to go to tell the story. People who know Avatar came out in 3D confused what we were waiting for. We weren't waiting for the 3D. We were waiting for computer-generated technology to allow us to create CGI, computer-generated characters that could be engaging and emotive. Because movies are not about the technology, they're about the story. And we created what we called virtual production. It had never been done before. We had Jim Cameron directing the movie, and we wanted him to be able to work with our cast with the same intimacy that he worked with Cade and Leo on Titanic, and convey to the audience compelling characters that would help the audience open their eyes. In virtual production, Jim went onto a, a barren stage, held up a virtual camera, but when he looked at the actors in front of them, and they were performing, we were capturing their performance, and he saw that through this virtual camera. And when he panned the camera around the barren stage we were on, he saw the world of Pandora and not the stage. When we were making the movie, did we ever think that it would surpass Titanic as the number one movie of all time? Of course not. Some people didn't even think that we should be making the movie. Why? Because they ascribe to the common misconception that mass audiences will never accept a movie that has environmental issues. Well, we proved them wrong. That's because it's based on story. People out there care. And we believe that they care. And we just have to find a way to show them and to engage them in what we are doing. And this was not only true in North America or the UK for Avatar. It was true around the world. China. Avatar did three 
times the next highest grossing movie. Russia, Brazil, Australia, all the different continents, people responded to the messages of the movie. They didn't go back to see it because of the 3D. They went back because of the characters and the messages. And the movie proved that there exists a huge populace that is concerned about other people and the world itself. And that these masses are ripe for a variety of businesses to cultivate and to reap the benefits from. As business leaders, one can't be afraid to tackle the tough issues that we face in our future regarding the planet. In fact, we have to embrace them. The more we embrace them, the more the consumers will recognize your companies that you're doing something and making a difference, and the companies will be rewarded. While Avatar was still out in theaters, an Ivy League professor wrote an essay about what they thought the lessons were from the movie. The last lesson of the essay was entitled, Understanding the Existing Culture. The lesson pointed to the importance of actively seeking to understand the history, the lore, the norms, and the values that shape the current collective thinking. And the essay concluded by stating, when the movie's over, we're not on Pandora anymore, but the lessons learned there can help us all be better people and better leaders. Whether the essay's writer was correct or not, it doesn't matter. It points out how this movie, a movie that was a technological triumph, touched people because of the themes. Science fiction is great at doing that because it allows our story to be a metaphor for the world in which we live. And in fact, the world in which we live was the inspiration for so much that people see in the film and respond to. But we took things out of context. We took the bioluminescence of the undersea life and played it in the nighttime forest. We took poisonous dart frogs in the Amazon and their colors and put them on giant flying creatures. Our world is amazing. We have to appreciate that. Growing up, one of the people that made me appreciate that was Sir David Attenborough and the tremendous work that David did to show us the beauty that's here on Earth. And in part, I think, inspired by that, we created a, a piece that uh, hopefully the BBC would be proud of about Pandora. But, you know, playing Pandora is a real thing and inspiring people here. One executive came up to me and he said, John, I've lived in my house for 18 years and it was only after your movie that I saw an oak tree that was in my front yard. And that was very rewarding to us, that this movie allowed people to start to recognize the, the message of the film and how amazing things are and how much we stand to lose if we're not careful. And as we begin working on the Avatar sequels, we've taken to heart the message of the film. And we are going to produce these two movies as eco-friendly as possible. We have started out by putting a one megawatt solar system on the roofs of our stages. And we will produce the whole movie in Los Angeles with zero power off of the grid. We hope to be an inspiration for other productions to follow in those footsteps. Not only does it make good sense for us environmentally to do this, but over the long run, that solar system is going to more than pay for itself and allow us to do more cost-effective productions down the road. And there are numerous decisions that every business can make that will reap rewards both environmentally and economically. The sequels will return audiences to the world of Pandora and will again use Jim's life experiences. Jim, who just got back from the Challenger Deep, the deepest part of the ocean, will go to the oceans in the next movies and will expose people and, and try and make them aware of what's going on here in the world with our oceans. And we once again hope to reach the hearts and minds of the audience and inspire hope for the future. It's Jim and my hope that all of the leaders in this room will find opportunities to grow their businesses, but at the same time, give a reason for your consumers to open their eyes, to give your consumers the belief that together we can make a difference, that together we can preserve the two greatest commodities that we have, people and the world around us. Thank you very much.